guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is mary jume we're going to be requesting this time today clients requested for it and i decided to film the process for you guys and if you are yet to subscribe to this channel please kindly hit on that subscribe button and turn the notification bell to always get notified anytime i post a new video and let's get right into this video for this project, I will be working with four yards of Kampala print. So guys, I will go ahead and fold my fabric into two and cut the front pattern. So know the amount of fabric to fold is your round lap measurement divided by two plus extra two inches. So I have here my round lap measurement and that's my tie measurement divided by two plus extra two inches. So this is my starting, starting point right here, we serve as my waistline. So from the waistline, I will come down to the hip line. So the hip line is 10 inches. So I will chop 10 inches and connect it into a straight line, okay? Then the next line is the crotch line. And to get your crotch line, your hip measurement divided by 4 plus 1 inch. So the hip I'm working with is 44 divided by 4 is 11 plus 1 inch, which will give me total of 12 inches. So for the crotch, I'm, go I'm going to be using 12 inches. So from the waistline, I'm going to come down to 12 inches. After chucking 12 inches, I will go ahead to connect it into a straight line. So guys, the next line is your knee line from your waist to your knee. So from the waist to the knee is 19 inches. So I'm going to chalk 19 inches and then connect it into a straight line. Then what I'll be doing next is to come down to the hip line and place my hip measurement divided by four and also add an extra one inch for sewing allowance. Go ahead and chalk it down there. So what I will be doing next is at the crotch line, I will be I will be placing my round time measurement divided by two. The round time I'm working with is 20, uh, 26 uh, inches divided by two. That will give me 13 inches. I will go ahead now to chuck it down there and add an extra one inch for my sewing allowance. So I'm just trying to make it so feasible for you guys to see. So what I will do next is to curve my crotch. I will use my curve ruler to do that. You can as well use your free hand. Any word that works for you is fine, okay? So I will just connect the point together after covering in the crotch. I will go ahead to blend it using my free hand and connect it to the waistline. So what I will do next is on the waistline, I will place my waist measurement divided by 4. So the waist I'm working with divided by 4 will give me 8 inches. I'm not adding that to mine. I'm just going to be adding an extra one each for sewing allowance, which is 9. So from that point, I will just connect it to the hip line. So from that point, I will just connect it to the hip line. So I will just use my curve ruler to do that. So just go ahead and connect it all the way down to the hip line. Then what I will do next is, I don't want this pan to be too free, but if you want yours to be too very free, what you will do is that from this crotch line, just go all the way down. Well, I don't want mine to be too free. So what I will do is to place my tape and check what I have at the hip line. So guys, after checking what I have at my hip line, I'm going to divide that into two, which gives me 7.5. Then I'm just going to chuck the 7.5 on the knee line. After chucking the 7.5, I will take my round knee measurement divided by two. The round knee I'm working with is 22 inches divided by two, which will give me 11. So you are going to share the 11 inches on both points. So what I'm going to do is to share the 11 inches on both sides and go ahead now to connect on the crotch to the knee line and from the other side to the knee line as well. So guys, from this crotch line here, so I'll just connect it all the way down to the trouser length and do the same on the other side as well. So guys, from this point, I'll come down by one inch and then connect it from that point all the way down to the other side as well. 
I'm just trying to arrange my ruler well and then connect it to each other. So guys, we are done with the front pattern. Now we go ahead now to cut out the front pattern and after cutting out the front pattern, we'll be cutting out the back pattern, okay? And for the back pattern, I folded my fabric into two as well. So now to know the amount of fabric to fold, whatever you fold for the front, just add three inches to it. So that's what you are seeing here. So I'm going to be placing my front pattern on the back pattern. So guys, after placing it on each other, my allowance will be taken on that crotch side of the fabric. So on the waistline, I'm going to be chucking two inches for my allowance. So I will place my tape and chuck two inches. At the hip line as well, I'm going to be using two inches and also on the crotch line i'm going to be using two inches but for uh, for a larger bot you could use 2.5 inches okay so i chucked two inches and then at the knee line i'm going to be chucking 1.5 inches so i will do that 1.5 inches all the way down to my trouser length So after doing that, I'm going to connect all my lines together. And then at the crotch line, I'm just going to connect the crotch curve and then blend it with my ruler, with my curved ruler, and connect it all the way down. So guys, if you've watched this video to this point and you're yet to subscribe to this channel, please kindly hit on that subscribe button and let's get right back. So guys, at the waistline of the back, I'm going to be coming up by 1.5. You remember we took out one inch from the front pattern. So for the back pattern, we are going to be replacing back our 1.5 inches to the back pattern. So at this point, I will just come up by 1.5 inches and I will connect the lines together. So from that point, I will just blend it all the way down to my waistline. So if you don't understand, you can easily rewind this video for better understanding okay so guys this is what it looks like and we are good to go so after that i will go ahead and cut out my fabric and as you can see this is what we have here so guys after cutting out my fabric as you can see i have two pieces for both the front and the back pattern so what i'll be doing next is joining so what i will do is to join one side of the front to the back and one side of the back to the front so i'm just going to be placing them this way and then place the front uh, on the back you will be placing them on um, right side facing each other then after placing them together i'm going to be stitching it down using half inch all the way down and i will do the same to the other side as well so guys after stitching it this is what it looks like and see how lovely and well placed this is looking so what we are going to do next is open it up like so and place them on each other right side facing each other and stitch it down with an half inch all the way down to the crotch line and also stitch it down with an half inch all the way down to the crotch line on the other side as well so guys after stitching it all the way down to the crotch line this is what it looks like so what i'm going to do next is to flip it over this way so after that i'm going to take my measurements after that cross stitches we made and i'm going to chalk my waist measurement divided by two and i will chalk that down and at the waistline i'm going to place my tape as well and take my hip measurement divided by two then chalk it down there as well So guys what i will do now is to use my chalk just to connect the lines together so after collecting after connecting from the waist to the hip line around that crotch line i will just go in half inch all the way down to my crotch line and then stitch it down so after stitching it down so this is what so what i'm going to do next is to join the flap together so i will place them together this way and make sure the lines are matching each other then i will be stitching it down using half inch all the way down so i'm just trying to hold it down with a pin here So guys, after stitching, this is what it looks like as you can see. So what we'll be doing next is cutting out the band and we have to determine where you want your zipper to be. So for me, I want the zip to be at the side. So what I'll be doing next is to take my tape to measure what I have all the way, uh, all around the waist. So after checking what I have all around the waist, then I'll go ahead to cut out my band. 
So guys, I've already cut out my band as you can see. So if you have a paper stay, you can add it to yours. I don't have a paper stay at the moment, so that's why I'm not using it. So what I have here is five inches, and on fold is going to give me two point five inches, and I will be using half inch to stitch it down, and my band will be two inches. So what I will do next is to place my band and then run the stitch all the way down my waist area. So guys, after stitching it down, this is what it looks like. And what I'll be doing next is attaching my zipper and we are good to go with this part, okay? So guys, for the top part, I folded my fabric into two and I left two inches for my zipper allowance at the back pattern. So what I have here now is my starting point. So I will go ahead to mark my neck depth and also my neck width. So what I'm using is three by three inches for the front pattern and three by two inches for the back pattern. So after determining my neck depth and my neck width, so what I'm going to do next is to chalk my shoulder measurement divided by two. So after that, I'm going to curve my neckline. So I just made my shoulder slope and I connected that to my neckline. So what I'm going to do next is to draw out my hammer line. So after determining the depth, I'm going to chalk that down and use my ruler to make a straight line. So after that, I will divide what I have as my hair mold line into two and mark that and I'm going to come out by half inch and also connect that together and draw out my hair mold curve. So guys, at the chest line, I will place my bust measurement divided by four and add two inches extra allowance for the sewing allowance. And at the top length, I'm going to be placing my waist measurement divided by four as well with an extra two inches for the sewing allowance and connect all my lines together. And after that, I'm going to cut it out. And for the back neckline, I'm going to be using two inches for it. So I will just take out the front neckline and use my ruler to curve the neckline and then cut it out. So guys, after cutting it out, we are good to go. So what I would do next is to cut out a facing for heat. So what I would do next is to cut out facing for both the neckline. So if you have a bias, you can use it as well just to finish up the neckline, okay? And for the sleeve, I've already drafted the pattern. I folded my fabric into two. I chucked the starting point and then chucked the length of my sleeve, curved my hammer and took out the um, sleeve tight measurement and cut it out. So after attaching my facing to the front and the back pattern, what I would do next is to attach the sleeve. I will just open it, I will just open up my fabric and then place my sleeve pattern on the shoulder area. Then stitch it down with an half inch all the way down to the hammer. Then do the same thing to the other side as well. So after stitching it down, I will go ahead to shape the top and attach my zipper. So after shaping guys, this is what it looks like. You can see how lovely and neat this is looking. So I will go ahead now to open up my zipper allowance and attach my zip to it and then fold. And I will go ahead to fold the damp parts. And after folding the damp parts, we are done with this tutorial guys. You can see how simple this is. So guys, this is what it looks like after finishing. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Like this video, drop that sweet comment, and I will definitely see you in the next class. And bye for now. Mary June love you home. Bye guys.